Hi, my name is Emma Sydney and my business is Digital Copywriting and I'm here today with Prosper on the online prosperity show. Now, what I discovered is that when you get truly deeply, intently curious about and focused on what it is that your client needs and loves, then you will have a business that thrive. And while we have about 400 businesses in Australia today closing down every month, some are not thriving. So it is really important to me that although what I do is digital marketing, I can talk tech all day and I create customer journey optimization. If I am able to help you as a business owner become truly passionate about who you are and what you deliver to your clients and create an incredible human to human connection, then we know that your business will thrive. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today on the online prosperity show. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the digital copywriter herself, Emma. Emma, how are you doing, my love? I'm great. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Thank you so much for making the time with me. Now, obviously, I said she's the digital copywriter, but she's also a copywriter, a marketer, and a SEO uh, specialist. Now, you would be sitting here and watching this show right now, and you probably have found that your website has come to a digital block. Nothing is happening. Nobody is calling, and you actually do not know why. But there's always um, a, a clue, or there's always reasons why that's not happening. Maybe your clients do not know what's in it for me. Now, the reason why we're bringing in Emma is because her copywriting skills and her um, digital expertise will help you understand how you can create a better brand, shift the focus to, for your client so that they get to know you, like you, and trust you. And as you know, people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Now, Emma, I could go on and on and uh, speak um, on your behalf, but you're here to let us know a little bit um, about what it is that you do. Tell us um, a little bit about your business and how you actually got started, Emma. Okay. So uh, about three years ago, I found myself actually fired from my job and I had to find a way of making a living pretty fast. So I jumped on a plane and I went to Thailand to learn social media for business. Now this was not unfamiliar territory because I had 10 years sales training, a couple of degrees and also I am someone who is very present online. I've been online since 1995 so it's very easy to find me. So um, the result of that was after the 10 days, I'd written an ebook that went onto Amazon, became number one, uh, and I just started working for people in terms of helping them with their social media and, and learning about their online. Once I'd done that uh, for a little while, what I discovered was that there was more to it than social media. And the really big problem I was facing was that I would post really great articles or really great information for clients, but because their website wasn't really available for someone to pick up the phone and then go for it or because you know the information that they had about their brand in general was a bit wishy-washy then the action of the social media was just nice to have and it wasn't really converting for my clients and I really wasn't happy with that so I started to do website copywriting and then I discovered that really the digital era requires a lot more than just some nice content so most people can say what they do However, the key to having a conversion on your website is first of all, creating a really, really nice pathway from here I am looking for something on Google right down the trail to ping, I'm going to say yes. So that's the first thing. And that's called a user journey. But the second thing that's really important is that the brand stands out as a brand with valued uh, information with valuable ideas about who they are and what their core is all about if they don't have their core values clear and most people don't then they really can't articulate how they're different from any other you know builder from any other real estate agent from re any other manufacturer and that's the key to the sale is actually the no like and trust that you're talking about and it's that human interaction that they need to have and that starts with you know 
actually what they look and feel like when someone comes on board when they first hit the website then it also has that user journey requirement so if someone doesn't really know what to do next and how easy it is to get hold of you then you won't get a conversion and so that's where I've been focusing my time for the last two years absolutely absolutely and that's that's remarkable because obviously um, the reason why people get into business is so that they can be of service to other people and if you cannot be found where your clients are searching, obviously that's not going to be um, helping out. Now you did mention something that is um, <clears throat> quite confusing for quite a lot of people, um, a user journey. Can you just elaborate on what you mean uh, by that? You know, um, what, what a user journey actually is. Sure, absolutely. So let me give you an analogy. And this is how people used to do business. So originally, you would have, maybe you would have a retail store, or if you're a service provider, you'd have a yellow pages listing. So those were the two sort of areas where you could have someone say, I, I need a bookkeeper, I'm going to look up the yellow pages, or I need um, new shoes, I'm going to go to my local shopping centre, or I'm going to, you know, look at the TV and get an ad for, you know, um, Whitner or something like that. So those are the two kind of channels that originally occurred. So they were, they were either the, the yellow pages or... Um, being either in a retail area or being on TV, radio, that kind of thing. Now, with the advent of digital, all of that has changed because Google is now really where people go to find out what's going on. So being visible on Google is a lot trickier. For example, if someone was looking for bookkeeper point cook and you had bookkeeping and didn't say where you were, they're not going to find you. And so there's really got to be a match between what's online for your business and what people are searching. And that's kind of the first disconnect that a lot of businesses face. They don't not understand the search optimization terms, which is SEO, and they don't have that really clearly visible on their website in line with their products and services. So that's the first block that people often have. The second one that they have is that, you know, let's just say you did have bookkeeping point cook and then someone clicks on that and they go to your website. Two main problems that occur right now is either the website is not mobile responsive, which Google now preferences and will drop you in the rankings if you don't have a mobile responsive website, or um, they get there and then, you know, you, you're faced with this really bland, not very inviting colour scheme. You don't have a proper logo. Nothing is... Uh, exciting about your brand and you know maybe there isn't even a click to call and so booking an appointment with a bookkeeper or getting to the next stage where you actually want to go and see somebody that's really the key to having a website and a lot of websites are kind of asking you to do all the work to figure all, all that out and so the second block that people have is they're maybe not aware of this but you can read my article about seven seconds from zero to hero, um, you only really have seven seconds for someone to take action after they get to your website. So if your website doesn't look very good, doesn't have a click to call, the action isn't clear, they're not absolutely captivated by what you look and sound like and then the words that are on there, then they're probably gonna bounce. And bounce rate is one of the biggest problems. They bounce off the website, they go look for another bookkeeper in Point Cook who looks and feels better and has maybe an online calendar link to book in. So the user journey really is from that original point where, you know, you say, okay, I want to get found on Google. It's over here. And then the second step is you get to a website and it's got actions that people can take immediately to feel comfortable with you. And they can get enough information about you to feel that you are a person and not just a robot. And then you need to be able to allow someone to take action by either making a phone call booking an interview, sending an email, or buying a product. So that's that whole process. And the really important thing about a user journey, and this is actually one of the latest Google Analytics statistics, which you might be aware of, is that Google has re realized that people take 14 times to go to a website and then buy. So now the average buying cycle is actually 14 interactions online.
So previously we've known that it was around seven to 12 and that was through emails and social media. So it's, it's not a quick process. Um, it's now 14 according to Google when a website's involved. So being found easily, being found several times, having the right information for your client and being really clear about what you offer has become increasingly valuable. And, you know, it even goes to the extent of having backup assets like a great LinkedIn profile, good Facebook page, um, and being able to allow people to either download something that they can get value out of or, you know, maybe sign up for a newsletter or something like that. So all of that is involved in a user journey. So it's actually quite big. There's a lot to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you so much for actually uh, deconstructing it and making it uh, easy and digestible for us um, over there. Now, you raised a really crucial point, which, um, you know, what the new analytics is, the 14 touch points that people need to uh, go through in order for them to uh, actually then transact, I mean, as part of the, the user journey. What is it that... Um, um, you know, a website owner can do in order to maybe uh, fast track or to make sure that they're actually attracting the ideal person who's going to come in at least on that 14 uh, times to make sure that, um, you know, they're going to serve them and they are not going to drop off at, n at number 12 when there's only two more stages to sort of um, go and finish the, the, the transaction. Yeah. Okay. So, well, one of the really key things, and I suppose this plays to my strengths, is that Google does love content and fresh content helps you to increase your Google ranking. So getting found more often is going to be key. Um, a second thing that is really important is having SEO and good SEO. So one of the things that uh, our SEO team does is we provide not just uh, website meta tags and information, which basically says something like... Um, you know, point bookkeeping, first consultation, obligation free, which would be one example of an SEO tag that was on a particular page for someone to start seeing that bookkeeping service. Um, the second thing that's really important is that Google My Business and Google Business Places is actually really important for your credibility. So we also set up in our SEO service those local places so that Google is giving um, people the ability to rate you as well. So having those third party testimonials and having that information that's less biased available for your clients is actually really key as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You also mentioned something that um, a lot of people would say, ah, I've been in business for 20 years. I think everybody knows who I am. So I don't need the credibility that Google is offering people. Um, what is it that people can maybe do within their website uh, to enhance that credibility just so that, you know, their waste, their time that they have spent consolidating their profession is not just going to be taken away by some kid with a pair of sweatpants and a, a t-shirt calling themselves an entrepreneur uh, online. Okay. So, well, the first thing to realize is the cost of sale. So a lot of people think, oh, well, I've got great referral business. I've got great information coming through. People know about me. I'm out in the workplace um, promoting my business. Like maybe you've got sales team on the road. Maybe you're actually going to business events yourself. Um, you've got people making phone calls on your behalf. All of that kind of lead generation work and you can also pay for lead generations incoming as well um, all of that kind of work is money so it's money and time which are your highest values and commodities in order to get the best bang for your buck in business so there's two things that i'd recommend there the first one is that when you are considering the cost of sale, um, recognize that even for somebody like UPS, which is a huge company, every single appointment they sit costs them $600 for their business ma development manager on the road. So that's a lot of money. If you think about five appointments a day for a business development manager, they have to make a lot of revenue to even get the cost back of that one person on the road. So if you can nurture your existing customer base properly, and that might be by having um, blogs on your website that update people regularly and then having an email and a social media 
that that points people to the blog so they can go and get that information. They're reminded of who you are and they're on top of the latest products or maybe it's a, a retail store where you're, you know, you're putting out a new product range and you want to keep informing people of what's coming up. Those kinds of interactions that you want to keep on your website so that there's a central point of call, but they spread out the ether through all the other methods. Those are the sorts of interactions that will actually nurture your customer base. And it's about 20% of the cost to nurture your existing customer base as it is to get one new lead in. So you can save 80% of your marketing budget by redirecting the funds into things like social media and email marketing rather than considering that you've got to put people on the road, you've got to get new leads in that way all the time. So honestly, my ideal client, my ideal client is always someone who's growing their business and they're looking at, you know, making 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million. So they shouldn't be relying on referral business because they wouldn't be growing in the way that they want to grow for me. And referral business only works as long as you're out there treading the boards, doing the work. So I'd suggest that, you know, nurturing your existing client base and looking at wider ways of allowing people to find your website, keeping it ranked on Google, those are the key to me to create that attraction magnetic marketing that you want to create in a smarter way. Absolutely. And um, I really, really love that, you know, you helping people in order to help them grow within their business. And um, if you're watching this right now, you'd understand that a true business owner actually aims to leverage his time and to create a lifestyle, um, you know, then a sellable asset. And if you haven't got all these things working, um, you know, together, then, you know, you probably do not have a business. And if you don't have ongoing lead generation, like what uh, Emma is saying, then you have a glorified job right there. Now, Emma, if you, you know, would have inspired somebody on this show right now and they're interested in hearing a lot more or wanting to work with you, what is the best way that people can get a hold of you? Okay. Um, all my business is digital copywriting. So you can find me anywhere you like. Uh, you can look up Emma Sydney with an I and you can also look up digitalcopywriting.com.au. Plus, um, one of the things that I would love to add value to anybody who's interested in taking that up is a brilliant brand checklist. And I know that you'll have the link available for people. That's also available on the homepage of my website. Very easy to find. And I also love people to have a chat to me. So I have a Calendly booking. If you wanted to chat in for 15 minutes, that's complimentary. Just do that. That's absolutely fine. And I look forward to working with people who are interested in expanding themselves understanding that their business is all about promoting their superpowers and creating a benefit to them and their clients. And it's never about discounting or fear of missing out marketing because that's really old school. Absolutely. Absolutely. I really love that because, you know, back in the time people used to be scared into making transactions or decisions, but these days it's all about, you know, creating um, you know, win-win situations for everybody else. Now, like if somebody is not that convinced yet, Emma, and you know, they, they like what you're about, they like what your story is and how you got started and everything else. Um, and then they come on that 15 sort of minute call, uh, call with you. What sort of, um, advice can they expect or what sort of, um, you know, uh, transformation can they expect, uh, when they start working with you? Okay, so what I discovered in my role uh, is that it's not about the stuff. I mean, obviously what I do is provide things like the user journey and I provide websites, SEO, pay-per-click, social media marketing, all of the assets of a Google agency. However, it's, it's never about the stuff. So if someone wants to work with me, what I will be doing for them is I'll be calling out their higher self. I will be asking them how they want to live life and exactly what it is that they desire for their life in terms of lifestyle, long-term legacy and how we can create that together because it's never about me selling something. It's always about me inquiring in terms of them being 
a better version of themselves. And if you're thinking about, well, how does that work in business and what's that got to do with anything, then Simon Sinek's Start With Why is one of the most powerful three minutes. There's a three, 40 minute, three minute, 40 second version. And that Simon Sinek Start With Why version is incredibly important. It starts with why and then the what and the how come after that. So that's what I'm going to give uh, an insight to for clients who are not sure how to stand out from the market and they can't figure out why they're different from the next agent, why they're different from the next accountant. I can always find out that for them and help them to articulate it. That's part of my superpower. Absolutely beautiful. And I love um, how you, you know, go in to start with the why, because if people don't understand why they're doing uh, anything, it's going to be difficult for their audience or their customers to actually want to know, like, and trust them. And uh, I yeah. am, I can guarantee you that, um, you know, having watched a lot of businesses fail, most of the reasons um, are not because there's no people in the marketplace, but it's because their mission is not aligned to the work that they're doing. So Emma, I can't thank you enough for the time that you've spent and the knowledge that you've dropped and the value that you've given us on the show today. Thank you, Prosper. It's been an absolute pleasure being here and I look forward to working with you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you.